I always ask people, like, would you want, would you follow me if I was fat? Exactly. People, <laughs> people are like, no. Like, I'm no. like, okay, then why is everybody <laughs> getting mad at me for saying stop being overweight? I don't understand. It's because they don't want to, they don't have the courage in the, in the circles, mm -hmm. you know, to freaking say the truth. You ever posted shit and you never got any traction? Yeah, of course. Shot videos, nothing happened. Yep. Go out, put a promotion out there, nobody buys it. Did it for a long time. Mm -hmm. I hated it. We don't do that anymore. Building the engine of the infrastructure of the Elliott Group is probably the greatest thing we ever did. Yep. It's, it's a lead filtering machine. It's insane. No one's ever seen anything like it. Matter of fact, when we do something, we do it hard. We figured this shit out. We figured the engine out. We figured out who you need to be. We figured out, you know, just how to build the team. My motive is to build the greatest leaders on planet Earth, which is, means if you're in front of my face, that's what I'm going to do with you. You ready? All right. Hey guys, what's going on? Andy Elliott, 1% Podcast. I'm here today with Joel Mercado. Now, Joel's a savage, 39 years old. He looks like he's like 25, dude. You know what I'm saying? Is it Puerto Rican? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's got yeah. that skin. Looks good, looks young, takes care of himself. This video is about the one mindset, right? We'll call it a hack, a skill, a trait, a principle, the foundation to the mindset that will change your life. So, Joel's going to rip. He's going to rip. I told him, I was like, dude, with me and him, we could go back and forth for five hours on mindset. I said, I want 30 minutes of the, of the, the mindset of a, of a savage, of a winner, somebody that wants to take over the world. So number one, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, get ready to take notes. Number two, when Joel says something, you're like, dude, I love that. Comment below, right? Let us know what it was. And then lastly, if you want to follow Joel, it's Joel Mercado official on Instagram. Okay, so if you guys want to go follow me, guys, go check it out there. Joel, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Hey, he's Thanks. a savage. Joel, so let's talk about it. Why did we choose mindset? Now, I'm going to let you rip, but why mindset? Why does that change everything? I'm you know, Andy, you I, I chose mindset because it's the thing that changed everything for me. So the one thing that I see every single time that someone comes up to me about business, relationships, anything, they're looking for like a secret sauce on the mm. business side of it. That's right. And I go, well, it's you. When you change you, everything follows. And then everyone follows with it as well. So the one thing I always talk about is imagery, mm. right? When you start to imagine, you start to think big, dream big, you do big things, right? Yeah. And the biggest thing is with the imagery, a lot of things don't, people don't see this, but you can actually reverse some, uh, what we call programming, mm -hmm. right? Some past programming. Yeah. You can get rid of it by saying, hey, I'm giving grace to myself. Mm -hmm. I see this path, how I'm gonna get there, what I'm gonna do, right? And we always talk about begin with the end in mind. So if you don't know where to start from, right? I always like to look at the beginning at the end in mind. The sure. end is where I start from and work backwards. Yeah, because I mean, and by the way, I'm, I'm not gonna cut him off here, but he's saying that, you know, you, you gotta have a dream because you gotta have something that fuels you the whole time, right? In imagery, right? Um, that's why we're gonna do all this, why we're gonna go through the grind, what we want, what we wanna accomplish right? What will fulfill us, but then also like who we see ourselves as, right? Yeah. Like imagery, like future imagery, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So right. when you think about it, like you heard the term fake it till you make it, yeah, right? And I believe in you're stepping into who you want to be, mm -hmm. who you're going to become. So that's the imagery work we're talking about, right? So when you can see yourself as that, that guy, right? For men that are looking at wanting to gain 10 pounds of muscle, you're yeah. seeing it. So what does it do? It makes you take action. It makes you go, okay, what do I need to do? What are the steps? What am I going to make that happen so I can fall into that person that I'm going to become? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people try to think too much. They're like, oh, well, I'll wait till like a Monday or I'll wait till this or I'll wait till that. Yeah. yeah. They're overthinking it. It's like, hey, just take a step. And one thing I always say, I say this all the time. It's like one of my favorite quotes. If you strive to be 1% better each day at the end of 100 days, you're 100% better than when you first started. That's I truly true. believe that. And, you know, you say you're a psycho competitor. Right? It is priceless, and you're a psycho competitor, right? Mm -hmm. well, what do you do? You go all in, right? A lot of people aren't like that. So they have to start in the beginning with one thing. Hey, guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're listening to me and Joel talk about creating and building leaders, if you're watching this and you're like, dude, I'm a leader, Joel. Like, I think that I could bring a lot of value to your company, to your industry. I'd love to partner with you. I love your style. I love what you're telling me. And you want to connect with, with Joel. There's a number below. 
All you got to do is shoot him a text message. Super simple. I love Joel. I said, Joel, how do you want me to have people reach out to you? He's like, dude, just have him text me. I'm like, dude, you sound like me. He's like, yeah, just have him text me. I don't care. He's like, listen, if they want to kill it, they want to crush it, they want to be part of a great organization, and they're either a, a great leader or they want to become a great leader, he goes, I'm in. Have him text me. So, guys, right now, you see his number below. Text him. You guys can take it from there. Let's get back to the video. What, what does going up. all in mean? Like, when, when I say, like, empty the tank, mm -hmm. right? Like, there's a lot of people have never given everything mm. they have, right? Yeah. So, on this imagery deal, right? You got a dream. You envision, uh, you said, like, um, like future truth, right? Like, mm -hmm. who do you want to be? Like, even though it's not today, you're, like, stepping into who you want to be, yep. which is in the future. But you almost lie to yourself that you are that person today. Mm -hmm. And then in soon time, you're not lying anymore because okay. you're that person, right? Yeah. You know, and most of the time you don't even really see the transition. It just, the so journey cool. takes you right into it, right? Yep. Um, what are some steps and some things that you do on imagery with goals yourself? You said mm -hmm. the guy that wanted to gain 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's important to like, you know, have a vision of like someone who's 10 pounds more muscular than you or that has a bigger business or, you know, whatever. Like, do you think that like visionary, like that they should have a vision board or something like that? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Not, not just seeing it here though, because it's all about mindset, but like if it's really something that's real, like you kind of got to put it out there a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you got to map it out, right? And how do you get a map? How, how, how do you do some of that? So we can give them some like application things yeah, if absolutely. somebody wants to figure out. You know, the biggest thing is, is like, this is why I'm here, right? I, I seek you as like a leader, right? So it's like, hey, I want to do what Andy's doing, right? Yeah. So that's why we're here. Yes. And, you know, I believe I'm a great leader myself because I've made a lot of changes in my life. Yeah. So one of my mentors taught me a lot of things. Pain drives change, right? That's right. He also said, hey, we have to map out success. Hey, write that down. Pain drives change. Okay. I mean, I, so I don't want anybody to miss that because some of you guys have pain and like pain teaches you. Absolutely. Right. It's a it, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's going back to that imagery you were speaking about, yeah. right? Because that pain says, I don't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. And then when you say, hey, I want to turn into this person and look like this person. Well, what does that look like? Right. Because sometimes we play games with our minds that we forget what that image looks like. Yeah. So when you can map it out and see it every day. Right. When I first started to change everything in my life, I would either have pictures. I would have post-its. I would write things on the mirror. True. I was literally intentionally saying, hey, I'm going to reprogram my mind mm -hmm. with positivity. You know, there's a term too that I think Jim Quick says, it says ants, automatic negative thoughts. We wake up every morning, we already have negative thoughts. So what are you putting in positively to get rid of those ants, right? Yeah, what, what you plug into, everybody, will determine what you're feeding your mind on a daily mm -hmm. basis, right? Yeah, music. Yeah, because if you want to make a change, <laughs> yeah. right, like you can't keep listening to the same stuff now to make a change because that, yeah. that, would, that would not work. 100%. So what are some shift. things that you can plug into as you're going through some of these steps here? Yeah. You said pictures, post-it notes. Hey, I'm making a commitment. I'm writing on my mirror. Um, what are some things that you plugged into, you um, know, or that people can plug into that like helped uh, reprogram you? Yeah. So a lot of it was changing my circle, right? Okay, Getting yeah, the right so people. audit your people around you. Always. Okay. Yeah. Like my circle's so tight and it's like, I want to be careful in what they're telling me, how they're saying things or their belief systems That's good. Um, and then without the circle then after that it's like you have music right mm -hmm. what kind of music are you listening to are they yeah. telling you you're garbage and you're not this or you should live this lifestyle yeah. um podcast right i love podcasts i'm yeah. constantly just bringing in new information in my it's brain. like a book 100 percent. yeah yeah it's awesome um i want to ask you something mm -hmm. uh, when he said pain right like pain teaches they say when the pain overrides the fear of change, like people change. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people, they like won't change anything because they're afraid of the change. But when that pain gets so high and you're like, all right, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. People just, they change. Yep. Right. Um, like what was your deal? What was your trigger moment? Man. So like you know, I'm sure you probably thing. became many different men, many different situations, but let's give us yeah. a couple examples of like some stories of like times where you said, all right, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it all started with the what I would say the mental side of it, right? Because uh, you know I grew up with my dad; he's actually mentally ill. Mm -hmm. He's got uh, paranoid schizophrenia, mm. and I don't share that often unless I'm with a private guest or stuff like that. But the reality is, is that was programming for me as a child, right? Feeling worthless, not able to do things, 
not getting someone to say that I'm proud of you or yeah. you're, you're always seeking something that doesn't exist anymore. So as I was growing up, I was learning that when that wasn't there in my life anymore, I was creating self-sabotaging behaviors mm. to replicate the feeling that I used to have that was gone. Dude, listen, everybody should write that down, self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are doing that right now and they don't know they're doing it. They don't yeah. mean to do it, mm -hmm. but they're just used to that that cycle, cycle. that sure. cycle, <laughs> that pattern. Yeah. And dude, it's, it's ugly, it's dangerous, mm -hmm. and it hurts a lot of people around you, yep. and it makes you miserable. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So so that's why we gotta recreate the mindset, yep. plug in a new information, yep. decide imagery, who do we want to become, mm -hmm. what do we want, start to dream again. Yeah. Right? And then um so like so what so so there was that situation. Give me some some things where you said, All right, I'm done with this. Yeah. So I mean there's like you said, there's phases. So from t from childhood to teens, going homeless, dropping out of high school, just saying, Oh my gosh, like it just doesn't end. It's just over and over again. Um at the age of 19, I moved to Arizona. Okay. So I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania originally. And I started realizing, I was like, I need to make a shift in my life. So I got rid of the environment. So I completely removed myself out of the environment I was in. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, that self-sabotaging was happening. So I was seeking like more professional help to learn other ways to get rid of that self-sabotage. Yeah. Um, so then I started learning like NLP and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then I found a hypnotherapist uh, actually here in Arizona. And what we did was we started getting rid of the programming of the triggers and traumas. Mm. And we started adding new imagery and saying, hey, listen, it's okay. You don't need to hear someone to say, sorry. You can forgive yourself and give grace to yourself in order to keep moving forward. So that was interesting to me. So I was it's like, like self-healing. It's completely self-healing. Yeah. So everybody, yeah. listen, I, I know this sounds crazy, right? As he's telling you his story, his life, and he's very successful. Um, a lot of people hear this and they're like, eh, that sounds crazy. If you crack open any successful person, they're crazy. Mm -hmm. And most people, when they hear something crazy, it's usually a great idea. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. Yep. And so you have to be open-minded to see that there's, there's a better way. Yeah. And for you to be able to get rid of that stuff, by the way, you did it for yourself, mm -hmm. but then you learned it. And then I bet you've built your team. Yep. Uh, self-healed yourself many times over again mm -hmm. and been able to do the same thing with other people along the way and you didn't even tell them that that's where you learned it no nope. but you learned it through doing it yourself 100% yeah I always say this the person that can self-correct is forever wealthy yeah if you can self-correct yeah you're the most dangerous son of a bitch in the room yeah <laughs> most people they don't have an awareness mm -hmm. to, to hey I need to correct this this isn't good for me yeah. if I keep doing this the pattern isn't gonna be good this is gonna be self-sabotage it's like Patrick Red David talks about like your next five moves. Like it's like your next five things could be really ugly if you don't fix this now. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that's good. So you got a hypnotherapist, ther or I can't even say it, but hypnotherapist. Uh, yeah. Hypno yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. you got those people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, they kind of went through the, uh, the, the process of, and you said you got to forgive yourself. Yep. You know, I, we believe, we believe in God together. We're mm -hmm. both Christians. Yep. Um, forgiving yourself it sounds very like okay that's cute yeah no dude if you don't forgive yourself and give yourself permission to have a big life mm -hmm. you won't have one yeah and honestly you'll run around and instead of turning your wounds into your weapons and helping other people and becoming great yeah and and making your life count you'll actually end up hurting a lot of people 100 percent. if that's what you want cool yeah. like don't i turn this off but if you can do this i mean i'm just telling you and I said I wouldn't cuss, but I said the person that can un-F themselves mm -hmm. can un-F anyone else. Yeah. So if I can fix me, I can fix anyone else. Mm -hmm. And so you're a coach. And one of the reasons why you're a very good coach is because you know how to fix yourself. Yeah. And yeah. that's the key, man. You know. So anyway, so you, so you fixed yourself. You yep. got help. Yep. And then so what happens? Uh, so got back into just obsessive mode but in a good way. That's right? good. Didn't pick up my first book till I was 30. Got into John C. Maxwell, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Great leader. Yeah, man. And you know, I started instilling all these books and all the knowledge into my team. Um, but first I had to start with me, right? It, so, can I ask something? Yeah. Because it's for everybody. Isn't that crazy that you said didn't pick up a book till I was 30? Mm -hmm. It's because we're a little older. We're, you know, like there's so many accessible 
self-development things now mm -hmm. for younger people than they were when we were. I mean, it's just that tape, yeah. CDs, yeah. you know, some books. How much impact did that first book you read make on your life? Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're listening to me and Joel talk about creating and building leaders. If you're watching this and you're like, dude, I'm a leader, Joel. Like, I think that I could bring a lot of value to your company, to your industry. I'd love to partner with you. I love your style. I love what you're telling me. And you want to connect with, with Joel. There's a number below. All you got to do is shoot him a text message. Super simple. I love Joel. I said, Joel, how do you want me to have people reach out to you? He's like, dude, just have him text me. I'm like, dude, you sound like me. He's like, yeah, just have him text me. I don't care. He's like, listen, if they want to kill it, they want to crush it, they want to be part of a great organization, and they're either a, a great leader or they want to become a great leader, he goes, I'm in. Have him text me. So you guys, right now, you see his number below. Text him. You guys can take it from there. Let's get back to the video. How much impact did it have on your life? It, it shifted my finances, my relationships. It shifted everything. Isn't that crazy? It, it's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Dude, I want to tell everybody, readers are leaders, okay? But somebody spent an entire lifetime and wrote it in a book. Imagine this. Yeah. A guy, John Maxwell, I think is 80 years old now. Yeah. I'm guessing, you know. Um, if you could learn what took him 80 years to learn in a two-week book, yeah. you'd be a fool mm -hmm. not to study the greats, Yeah, right? Yeah. And you said it changed everything. Yeah. Okay, I just want to say that in <laughs> case anybody's like, oh, I don't have time. You're going to be giving up 10, 15, even 20 years not trying to give yourself a week or two. And, and once you do, it spiraled into this journey that you're probably about to tell me about. Oh, absolutely. That now you're an addict, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the time, I was just like, hey, I just want to be a business owner. I want to be an entrepreneur. And then, again, when we go back to my mentor again, he's like, I'll teach you everything you need to know through painting. And I was like, painting? Um, you know, growing up, I was always told, do a white collar industry. Mm -hmm. um, be clean shaved. Be in a suit and tie because, you know, these are the way that people are going to view you. Yeah. And I saw my mentor. He's just in plain clothes. He looked like a surfer dude, and he's a multimillionaire. And I'm like, well, that's not what I was told. Yeah. That's not what that looks like. Yeah. And when he's like painting. Well, the person it, that told you that thought that. Yes. <laughs> and then he thought, well, I think millionaires look like surfers. Yes. And then yeah. I'm like, I think millionaires run around and cut off shirts. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, bro, it, they're all right. Yeah. yeah. But you had to find your identity. So you connected with this guy. Yeah. And you were like, dude, I don't need to be like that. I yeah. just need to be great. Yes. And care and be different and yeah. stand out and make relationships others can't. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, so what happened? So this, this mentor, yeah, uh, not dressed up like in the suit, you know, the, I'm giving an example, the, the corporate America guy, yeah. right? Yeah. What happens? Uh, so he started teaching me skills mm -hmm. and I was like, what do you mean? I'm Are great these painting at skills. Actually, no. Okay. Uh, he calls it TLC. Yeah. Time and by the way, I want to tell everybody, <laughs> you're, he, yeah. you're, you're, you're in the painting space. Mm -hmm. uh, can we tell everybody what you do real quick? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a coach. But also is in the painting space. Tell yeah. me what you do real quick. So, yeah, so we'll I go right back. I own multiple painting contracting uh, businesses in different states. And through that, I use my coaching program to help people that I love. So one of my partners is my best friend here in Arizona. Um, another partner of mine is in San Diego. Okay. And another one we're opening is in Florida. It's my cousin. So I got rid of those limiting beliefs, too, where people are like, don't work with your family. Don't work with your friends. It's all crap. Yeah. It's, hey, it's, listen. It's worse. I get it. There's some people you shouldn't work with. Okay. Yeah. But there's no like it can't be this or that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, so I'm just saying like I, I I get it. You know, some people have crappy families. Some people have really good families. Yeah. If you got good families, you do business with them. If you don't, right? You don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know. Um. But okay, cool. So I want to make sure everybody knew what you did. Yeah. Which is awesome. And then, um. So he didn't teach you the painting skills. He was teaching you skills. What are some of the skills you learned? Yeah. He calls it TLC. So time management. That was number one. He's like, if you don't know time management, time I can't management help you. huge. Yeah. Okay. And then the L means listening. So he's like, effective listening is the number one skill set anyone can ever learn. And I was like, what? Dude, that's huge. Yeah. It was the number one thing. Yeah, the art of communication, guys, yeah. which obviously every one of you guys, that'll be the one thing that'll make you wealthy. You're not going to ever be able to be a great communicator without listening. Yeah. And then number C. So is time well. listening. Yeah. And the C was coaching. He's such a strong believer. Is if you're not coaching your people, it doesn't matter what business you're in. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You need to coach your people, period. And he's like, this is the recipe from other businesses that don't do what we do. Mm. And I noticed that being in the blue collar industry, right? Like a lot of blue collars don't coach. Yeah. They, they just don't. hire someone like, hey, just do it, handle it. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it separates us big time. Yeah. So guys, and, and if you want to write this down, um, leadership isn't a position. It's a skill of influence. Mm -hmm. And basically, to have the most influence, you have to be a coach. And so, like, you don't need a position. You don't need a title. Mm -hmm. You don't need to own a company. And it's not a football coach. And it's not a soccer coach. Right. It is someone who cares about other people that wants to leave people better off than when they found them. And when you're around a coach, you always feel like you can do anything in the world. You feel powerful. You feel strong. Yeah. You feel motivated. You know, they're just... You just want to be around them longer, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we taught you to be a coach, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and then uh, after painting, like, I had an opportunity last year where I really wasn't thinking about the painting industry at all. I was just so, like, I kept telling everybody I was under a rock. I was so focused on my people, on my team, and myself, mm -hmm. and learning this new business, right, that I wasn't thinking outside the box. And I got hired by a social media company, a really good friend of mine now, Lucas, which You'll, you'll know who he's yeah. doing here. Um, he hired me to be a paint coach for one of his businesses oh, wow. to give more value to his clients. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everyone's just calling me like, I need this. This is what I'm looking for. Because yeah, it's a niche. No one's cracked. 100%. Yeah. 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 You, you hit a good niche, bro. <laughs> and by the way, overall, guys, he, he's a badass coach in any industry, but he found a niche. He found a hole. You know, there's a, a Blue Ocean strategy book. I'm sure it's a Blue Ocean. Is that is that what it's called, Blue Ocean? Not sure. I've never heard of that. Huh? Yeah, Blue Ocean strategy. Okay. And bottom line is, is that uh, it just, it's like Red Ocean is what everybody else is doing. Mm. Blue is what no one else is doing. I read the book a couple of years ago, and it said if you can find a Blue Ocean, which means no one's doing it, and find that strategy, it will explode. Wow. And so, you know, when I got into the automotive space, or I was an automotive guy, you know, um, Grant Cardone was in there mm -hmm. and he had been in for, for 10 years, but he had kind of been doing real estate now and he kind of left it, you know what I mean? But he still had all the business. And then, so I went in and I kicked him out of the automotive space in about a year, yeah. boop, 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 went through every deal. And it was kind of a blue ocean strategy. No one was in there. Mm -hmm. And the people that were in there weren't any good and they didn't really understand it. And they were more like theory teachers, right? An applicant teacher is someone who's actually done it and they're really good. Theory teacher was like, well, if you if I were to do it, this is the way I would do it. Who do you want to learn from? Yeah. An applicant teacher. I was in it, dude. Yeah. I know that. I know exactly how it feels. I know what that's like in that situation. Mm -hmm. So we taught it and we blew it up. And then that niche, though, led us to worldwide coaching in every industry and, and many other things. But the idea of it is, is that I, I started with a little niche, just like yep. the one you said. Yep. And, um, and so you got in, everybody's calling you. Yep. And then, so are you speaking on stages? You're on Zoom calls and teaching, yeah. like what's going on? Yeah, so I'm back-to-back -back calls now. And you know, one of the biggest things is there's nothing more fulfilling than seeing these guys, like when I was suffering too, um, seeing them winning immediately. Mm. Like it's almost like within 30 days, they're like, Joel, I've already tripled my numbers. I'm like, I know. Sure, you changed your life. <laughs> I'm like, I know, right? And it, it's very rewarding to be able to do that. and. You know, we're we're really changing. And I said that I was going to say this today is, you know, just like you say, too, like I'm going to call my spot. This is my spot today is we're going to change the whole painting industry. Um, you know, a lot of the older generation on the painting industry was very big on the production side of like, hey, this is how you apply these things and nothing to knock on that. Yeah. But that's not feeding their families. Yeah. It, it's like an art for them. It's an interest. It's a skill. And I respect that. But um you know, I want to teach these guys, A, to overcome their obstacles, get rid of the limiting beliefs, and you can be a crusher in painting mm -hmm. and provide not only for your family, but this is what changed for me. When I had a guy come to me, he's like, I make 15 bucks an hour. And he's like, I've been with this company for 13 years. And I told him, what would it do for you if I showed you how to do 30, 40 bucks an hour? What would that do to your life? It would change my life, he said. Huge. What did I do? Here's my process. This is the program, but I need you to listen. I need you to execute and you'll do it. And he's one of my top painters right now. Same thing with all the clients I have right now. I That's said, insane. Hey, let's do this, right? And I want it more than them, right? Because I've been there. I feel it. I see it. I want them to know I'm right by your side. I'm not the coach that's not living it. I'm still active. I go check on job sites. I check on my line. people. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was, lead from the front. I was talking to you downstairs. Uh, we were talking about um, uh, being emotional and too close to something mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to see what you really have or how much opportunity is still left how much meat's still on the bone yeah 
And so these guys, I'm making 15 an hour. You're like, hey, could you do 40 or 50? They're like, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. You're too close, right? I always ask people in a business, I say, what, what, what decisions would you make if no one would get their feelings hurt? Mm. <laughs> Listen, yeah. think about your business for a minute and think about a, a decision that probably needs to be made. If we were to remove, okay. What would you do if you were going to be consulting you? Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to put you over here and you're going to consult you. And they're looking at everyone in your company and they're like, you know you need to make that move. But because you're you, you're too close, you're too emotionally attached. You know that if you make that move, it's going to hurt her feelings. Yeah, It's going to hurt his feelings. And they've been with you for four years and they're good people. Yep. That, that's still the move. Yeah. That's still the move. Um, uh, they're one of the largest churches in the world right now is called Life Church. Mm. And Pastor Craig Rochelle, he's an amazing leader. I study, I mean, I study like many different preachers. This guy's so good. Before they were the biggest, um, in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, everybody goes through all these mistakes. 15 years ago, uh, he had some churches in Oklahoma and he was opening some churches in Phoenix. They have the, the Bible app. It's billion downloads. I mean, it's ev it, it, it's just it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think like half the world's downloaded this UVerse Bible app. I think I have. It. Yeah, Life Church. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, they I own have it. That, That's yeah. theirs, and they give me wow. free resources. All these churches. Mm -hmm. Before they were that, he said they opened these two churches in Phoenix, and um, it was kind of like the way he saw it. It was like that was his baby, mm. you know. And you know, in the meeting, they would be like, "We can't give up on our baby," you know. We, we can't give our kid away. Yeah, you know. And at the end of the day, somebody helped pull him back from the situation. Mm. And he realized is that he, they asked him, if you were to consult yourself, what would you tell yourself to do? Forget you or you for a minute. Yeah. And he said, I would shut him down. Because they weren't, they weren't, they, it was the beginning. They made, they made mistakes like any company. Now they're massive now. Now they, they're killing it. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, we all have losses. Yeah. And then, and then the guy asked him, what decisions would you make if you knew no one would get hurt, no one would get their feelings hurt? I would retreat because I would use those resources to do it right this time now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, like he had to ask himself. And then he asked, what would, what would your successor do? What would your mentor do? I don't know who your mentor is, but let's say you're in a situation, ask yourself, remove yourself and go, if I wasn't here today, if I had died or I got fired, and my mentor replaced me, what would he do? Mm. And he said, he'd shut it down. Yeah. They shut it down, it hurt. He said, 15 years later, it still burns a hole in his ass. Mm. It was very hard for him to do, but it was the right thing to do. And the co the, 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 the company has grown. They have, now they have a lot of churches everywhere. They have 500 churches around the U.S. and they own the UVerse Bible app and they have the biggest online church in the world. Mm -hmm. It was just part of learning, but they had to step back and detach. In order to go up, you must remove yourself for some for sometimes to, to, to not be so emotional. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And and it's hard because we're human beings and we love everybody. But a lot of the times, and I'm gonna say this, but this is big, when you know there's a problem and you don't fix it, you become the problem. It's your it's your company. Yep. And there's a problem inside of it. And now you're tolerating that problem. Now you become the problem. Now people are like, he's the problem. Mm-hmm. He's our leader and he didn't, he turned his head to that. He didn't fix it. And you're like, yeah, but you know her and you're emotionally attached. Yep. And you literally just took that problem that you could have solved and now people see you as the problem. It's crazy, right? Yes. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're listening to me and Joel talk about creating and building leaders. If you're watching this and you're like, dude, I'm a leader, Joel. Like, I think that I could bring a lot of value to your company, to your industry. I'd love to partner with you. I love your style. I love what you're telling me. 
and you want to connect with, with Joel, there's a number below. All you got to do is shoot him a text message. Super simple. I love Joel. I said, Joel, how do you want me to have people reach out to you? He's like, dude, just have him text me. I'm like, dude, you sound like me. He's like, yeah, just have him text me. I don't care. He's like, listen, if they want to kill it, they want to crush it, they want to be part of a great organization, and they're either a, a great leader or they want to become a great leader, he goes, I'm in. Have him text me. So, guys, right now you see his number below. Text him. You guys can take it from there. Let's get back to the video. But leadership, <laughs> but no, leadership yeah. is like, that's leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and this is what, you know, you get coached on. And this is what, this is why you need to have a coach. Everybody needs a coach. Everybody yep. needs to, to be able to see things through a different set of lenses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And by the way, remember we said the number one mindset thing that would change your life? Guys, we're covering it. And 50 more, you know, change your lenses, change your life. You said you can't, you can't get a different life if you don't become a very, a, a different person in the yeah. very beginning. You said basically, if like nothing changes, nothing changes, right? Yeah, that's the same thing I always say every time. Like, when people are looking for these secrets, it's you. Mm. you that's just huge. Yeah, he said there's no you. special hack, no special trick. It's literally you. So basically, and it wasn't exactly how you said it, but how I heard it was, the world is a mirror. It's a mirror. It'll give you back who you become. Mm. And if you don't become the person that you need to become, it just can't give you what you're asking for because you haven't become it yet. Um, you might even be running the right play. Maybe I reach out to you and you're like, dude, I did this thing and it's and it worked. Mm -hmm. And you're like, dude, I'm just gonna mirror the play. But then you didn't become the person that they were. Yeah. And so the play doesn't work. And then they're mad at you for the play. But you're like, yeah, but I told you that you had to be selfless. I told you that you had to self-lead first and you're not doing a very good job leading yourself. You're mm -hmm. bossing everybody around. And, People don't want to work for a boss anymore. Yeah. They'll work for the leader for blood, sweat, and tears, but they won't work for they work for the boss for a paycheck. Yeah. And you know, and, and plus you're not innovative, you're not growing, you're not changing. You know, you, you don't have a big dream. Dude, if you don't have a big dream and you're the owner, if you don't have a big dream, nobody's gonna follow you. No, not at all. Nobody wants to follow somebody who's not inspiring. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, remember because you said you're a product of your environment and you talked about proximity. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, you said you're very careful who you put yourself around, very careful because they could say something that could harm you or hurt you or affect you. Absolutely. Like, man, like all these things are so important. There's so many ways. And so I think having an audit of your life, uh, the places you go, who you're around, mm -hmm. um, you know, who you hang out with. and what then consume. And then really, yeah, <laughs> you talked about like yeah. music, podcasts, different yeah. things. Um, and then so I want to ask you, and, and, and this will I, we'll kind of like bring it, to to like a close here how do you kill off a bad mindset how do you how do you kill it off like when you made a decision that, to say i'm sick of this mm -hmm. okay you probably you know it gradually got better but you probably made a decision okay which because nothing changes till a decision is made yeah how'd you kill off that old crappy mindset or Maybe you got a good mindset and you have good vibes, but yeah. you have limiting beliefs mm. and you just don't think you're capable of more. Yeah. How do you kill that off and, 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 and prep like a painter? Yeah. How do you prep yeah. the room to get ready to get painted? Because yeah. now they're going to take this mindset and run with it. How do we teach them to prep that room? I love it. You know, it's the same thing. Uh, I'm going to give two things to the mm -hmm. viewers, right? I want them to write this down, right? Good. It's important. Write it down. Um, the biggest thing is you do you first first thing in the morning. So what that means to me is I don't help anyone until I help me first. Mm, that's good. So the first thing is, is God. So I give God my time first thing in the morning. That's great. Then I give myself the time. So whether that's physical, right? Has to be something physical. Because if you're already getting something negative like in your you, mind. You start, you get you moving. You have to, You yeah. get moving, right? You have to. It's either the gym, some jump ropes, some kind of, something. Yeah, yeah, some kind of exercise or just get momentum you yes. gotta get moving right 100%. oh go for a freaking walk yeah but i i always say personal wins so that's yeah. why i say like write that down set yourself up for personal wins so when we were talking about earlier like time management well you got to block something in right so a lot of people want to start a day off and they're not actually planning their wins mm. i plan my wins yes you're a winner before anything else and happens. before it's next and you know what's true and i'll say this this just made me think I mean, if you don't if you don't decide who you are the world's going to tell you who you are Yes. Dude, there's someone that's going to run yes. into you first thing in the morning. I dare you not to do what he just said, which is put your first yourself first in the morning, spend a little time getting yourself right. Mm -hmm. 
you know, exercising, you know, feeling good, letting those endorphins flow, yep. oxytocin, serotonin, those chemicals, getting them going by doing a little exercise. Fine, don't do it. Just walk out your door and the first person with the bad attitude that cuts you off in a parking lot, throws the finger up at you, mm -hmm. guess what? You could have took care of yourself that morning, you're like crazy people, <laughs> and you just would have moved on. Yep. But now you're like, whoa, what's your problem, man? Yeah. It's like all of a sudden you're triggered because you don't know who you are, mm -hmm. you know? You, you know, give like, yourself the time. Yeah, that's huge, yeah. man. Okay, yeah. so that's one. Personal wins. Yeah, personal wins. Put yep. yourself first. Start yep. the day every day that way. Yep. And I also say one thing that I say, if they want to add this too, is I say, it's okay to have a bad moment, but not a bad day. Facts. Right? Because, like, yeah. we're human. Yeah. You're going to have a bad moment. You have lots of them. It is what yeah. it is. But if you stay in that mindset of it's a bad day, you're going to have a bad day. It's just right. how it's going to be. You that's just right. asked for it. So... I always say too, the last thing I want to add to that is find someone you can call. Mm, that's huge. Right? Like when you are pre saying, hey, this is a boundary and I know that there's something wrong with me. I need to be able to call you for you to say this one thing for me. Mm -hmm. Like somebody somebody that you, you, you trust mm -hmm. that um, knows what your goals are, who yeah. you want to become, what your standards are, yeah. knows what you have to lose yeah. if you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And somebody that like they just want the best for you. They have nothing. There, there's I think there's no money tied. It's like they genuinely give a shit about you. Yep. And I think that person is somebody who's not afraid to tell you the truth. That's important. Right. Very important. It can't be a pushover. Mm -mm. This is to be someone that's very direct with you yep. and who's willing to tell you things that you don't want to hear, even if it's hurtful. Mm hmm. Find that person. Yeah. Put them on dial. Yeah, dude. Because finding yeah. someone to tell you the truth nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Let's always say this. If you had food on your face, right? Mm -hmm. Would someone tell you? Dude, I was literally sitting there. We're in this conference. This lady walks up to me, right? And, and listen, I know it's a little weird. It's a little awkward. But, I mean, we're not for me. But, like, I, and I asked her. But this is how it goes. Lady yeah. walks up to me. And she's got this big piece of food right here. And I just keep staring at it. And I'm like, hey. You got you got something right here. Like I'm like like I love you. Yeah. Like you got something right here. And she's like, oh, oh. And I'm like, and I, I reached over and I wiped it off. And she's like, oh my god, that was on my face. And I was like, yeah. She and I was like, when do? You, and I'm like, you know. And she's like, I didn't eat three hours ago, and I've been walking around everywhere. Oh my. And I yeah. go, those people are assholes. Mm -hmm. Every person you walk by saw that food on your face and didn't have the courage to even tell you. Mm. I'm your buddy. I'm your buddy. It's not weird. If you got food on your face, I should tell you. Yeah. If you got a booger hanging out of your nose, I should tell you. If you're being an asshole to your wife, I should tell you. Mm -hmm. You don't want the friend that when you call, they're like, yeah, me and my girl. You're like, dude, I told you you should have left her, man. I told you, dude. Yep. You know how many other girls would die to be with you? You don't want, you want that dude to be like, dude, listen, man. Dude, she probably didn't mean it that way. It's just a miscommunication. It's a misunderstanding. Dude, you need to go home. You shouldn't have left. Yep. Turn back around, man. Go home. Okay? You guys don't go to bed angry, right? Yep. Talk it out. Let her talk. Hear her out. And when she's done, then you can finish. But listen to what she's saying. Mm -hmm. And then, dude, she'll listen to what you're saying. Dude, listen, the devil attacks what's valuable, man. He's trying to attack your, your relationship, bro. Don't let him do that. Yeah. You're like, oh, man, I needed that. <laughs> because if it would have been that other guy that had been like, dude, you know what, man? You don't deserve that, bro. You work your ass off, man. You, you know, you got her that new car last year. I don't know what her problem is. Mm. You know what I'm saying, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And, and, and by the way, it could be the same thing from a girl yeah. calling her girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I think, I think that that was a huge, that was actually the number one trick to all of this is to find somebody that will be direct and tell you the truth. Because all change starts with honesty and the truth. Yeah, and if you want to elevate, oh, this is big. Let's add this to the end, and then I'm going to let you yeah. close this out. Yeah. Um, if you want to get wealthier, if you want to make more money, if you want to get in better shape, if you want to do anything, it's going to call for higher levels of accountability. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I want to say this, like, as we finish this, like, this is an opportunity for you guys. If you need, if you need someone to plug into, if you want higher, a higher level of accountability, you guys should shoot them a text. I'm going to make sure I put his number right here on the screen. You guys can reach out to him. Um, you know, I don't know where you've been through, how you were raised, what, you know, it's all the same. We've all been through all kinds of crazy stuff. 
and uh, turn your wounds into your weapons. And by the way, get around the right people. Maybe you're like, dude, I need to be in a, in a circle of good people. You guys can reach out to him, man. Yep. I love that. So I'm going to put his number here on the screen. Shoot him a text message. Introduce yourself. I saw you on Andy's podcast. And uh, one last thing you want to drive home to anybody watching this. Yeah, I mean, purpose. Okay. Find your purpose. Find your purpose. And what, what that means is your principle-centered decisions to find your purpose. What drives you, right? What drives you every day. Because, listen, it's going to be easier to stay in bed it's going to be easy to not do the harder things right but when you have purpose you don't have an option you just get up mm. you just drive you just do it yeah and you know yeah. uh, and i'm going to add to that so he says find your purpose and then also like when you don't feel like fulfilling uh the things that are required to, mm -hmm. to fulfill your dream and your purpose i want you to go back to think about like when you got kicked out <laughs> yeah yeah he didn't think uh, you were going to become anything no you thought you were going to be a loser? Mm -hmm. Well, I always say this, prove them right or prove them wrong. Okay? And so, like, I use that shit as fuel. Like, if somebody bets against me, you know, I like it when people laugh at me. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm just, I'm like sick in the head. Like, if you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Like, I don't need you to pat, on, pat me on the back. I don't need you to flatter me. If I'm doing, like, flattery is like, oh, good job, man. You're doing the best. Like, I don't. Like, I love that, like, thank you, but, like, I don't need that. I'm really looking forward to somebody laughing at me today because that's the shit that gets me right yeah. in the state to go rip someone's throat out. Yeah. And, I mean, like, in a good way, kick some ass. Okay? So, anyways, man. I love it, man. Love you, bro. Thank you so much. Much love. Man. Make sure you guys follow him on Instagram. Shoot him a text if you need anything. You're going to see a lot of them uh, around us. He's 39 years old. That was the year. That was how old I was when my life really changed. Um, you know, it's weird. I made a decision when I was 39 to really uh, start doing things differently. I went hard, be, like you said, became a psycho competitor, decided I want to change all these people's lives. Here I am, 44. And then he's like, man, dude, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to do what you're doing. He's 39. Everybody wake up today, mm -hmm. okay? It's morally the right thing to do. You're going to inspire many, many, many millions of people to change their lives because you changed yours. Yeah, you get the benefit. Your family gets the benefit. You get to break the bloodline, mm -hmm. you know? Your kids ain't going to do what, you know, you had to do. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing is, is that you're going to change a lot of people's lives. Some you'll meet, some you won't. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's, today's the day to change. Make sure you guys follow them on Instagram. Shoot them a text message. Guys, we love you. We'll see you in the next podcast. Good job, big dog. Yeah, thank you so much. That was good, man. Hey guys, looks like you made it to the end of the video. You're the true point zero zero zero. One percenters. Look, I know one percenters, it can make it halfway through the video, but making it all the way through, you guys are the best. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Number one, I want to get closer to you. The fact that you made it all the way through the video, you're like, man, dude, I want to roll with this guy. Okay, so I need to connect with you. Down below, there's a description box on this YouTube video. There's a link. It says coach with me one-on-one, -on -one, okay? If you'll go and you'll enter your information, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. You can tell me what you need help with, what your goals are, and we will crush it together. I would love to help you guys go to the next level in life. You can tell I'm changing my life really fast, and I know that you guys want the same thing. I'd love to go with you on that journey. So right now, if you'd like to partner with me, team with me, if you want me to help coach you and push you, everybody needs a coach, a higher level of accountability to go to the next level. Go to the description box below, click on the link, fill out your information. I'll talk to you in the next 24 hours. Let's kill it.